I spent two memorable days with Justice Ginsburg in September of 2016. She invited CBS Sunday Morning into her apartment and into her chambers at the Supreme Court. She also let us tag along on a trip to the opera. No matter what is said of her jurisprudence, she lived a remarkable life defined by strength, intelligence, and determination. Here is our profile of Ruth Bader Ginsburg from four years ago. These are my collection of colors. That is beautiful. You're really pushing the boundaries. Yes. This is my dissenting color. Why? It's black and grim. But it sparkles too, so it gets attention. In fashion, that's known as a statement piece. And you have Ruth Bader Ginsburg yes. is diminutive, mm -hmm. but looms large as a powerful liberal voice on the United States Supreme Court, People appointed by Bill Clinton in 1993. That this nominee is a person of immense character. At 83, Ginsburg is now the oldest sitting justice, known among fans, including the president, as the notorious RBG. And along with Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor, one of three women on the bench, which strikes her as not nearly enough. People ask me, when would you be satisfied with the number of women on the court? When there are nine. For most of the country's history, they were all white men. In fact, the Supreme Court was a men's club for 192 years, until Sandra Day O'Connor was appointed by Ronald Reagan in 1981. The pinnacle of a law career, you have achieved it. But I don't think it was by dint of luck. What is this, this song from My Fair Lady? A little bit of luck. I had more than a little bit of luck. My Own Words is her first book as a Supreme Court justice. She takes us through a life of achievement and loss. Two days before Ginsburg graduated in 1950, valedictorian from James Madison High School in Brooklyn, her mother Celia died. That was taken in 1946. She had cancer and it lingered for many years. Her mother's influence has been enduring. She said two things, be a lady and um, be independent. Be a lady meant don't give way to emotions that sap your energy, like anger. Take a deep breath and speak calmly. Whether it's on camera or not, okay. I want you to see the portrait of Marty. This is typical Marty. Why do you say typical Marty? Because he's relaxed, he's reading a good book, he is underdressed. She met Martin Ginsburg on a blind date at Cornell, graduated and married in 1954 had her first child in 55, and entered law school in 56. After two years at Harvard, Ginsburg transferred to Columbia and graduated first in her class. Tied for first. We'll call that first. But she didn't get a single offer from a New York law firm. I had three strikes against me. One, I was Jewish. Two, I was a woman. But the killer was I was the mother of a four-year-old child. You graduated first in your class. Didn't that say something about your ability to be both a mother and the best? It should have. And later, she'd have a son, James. But what if? What if you'd had that career? You and I wouldn't be talking today. You're exactly right. And my dear colleague, Sandra Day O'Connor, put that very well. She said, if Ruth and I came of age at a time when there was no discrimination against women, we would be retired partners in a major law firm. Instead, Ginsburg became a law professor at Rutgers University, groundbreaking in the 1960s. In the early 70s, she wrote the first Supreme Court brief on gender discrimination. I called 1972 the year of the woman. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortion. But ask her today about that historic Roe v. Wade decision, and you might be surprised. Better to go step by step and have a series of decisions rather than have one decision that made every law of every state, even the most liberal, unconstitutional. Too giant a stride. There are many people who disagree with me who say that the backlash would have occurred in any event, and we will never know. You've lived here since... Since 1980. 1980. Here's something you'll rarely see, a Supreme Court justice at home. I'm 
not surprised to find in, in your apartment shelves and shelves and shelves of books. You would expect that. Mm -hmm. Maybe what you wouldn't expect are the shelves and shelves of cookbooks. A tax law expert and gourmet chef, Martin Ginsburg, who died in 2010, collected scores of cookbooks. She had only one. I had a book called The 60 Minute Chef. If you start it the minute you walk through the door, it would be on the table within 60 minutes. I had seven things that I made. We went in rotation. When I got to number seven, we went back to number one. That is, until her daughter Jane suggested she retire from the kitchen. It came to her that daddy's cooking was ever so much better than mother's. Why shouldn't daddy cook every day? Why Your feelings you? weren't hurt. Not in, the, in least. the least. Not in the least. Having phased me out of the kitchen, she feels responsibility to make sure I'm properly fed. Today, her daughter Jane does the cooking. If I pulled it out, you'd see it's filled with individual dinners. Once a month, the Columbia law professor... I want to wait, pull wait, it out. Mm -hmm. ...fills her mother's freezer. So, and she's got each one labeled. This is rockfish rock fish? with lemon... And this one? ...shrimp and squid with saffron tomato sauce. You eat well. She has had health issues. In 1999, she battled colorectal cancer, then pancreatic cancer a decade later. She never missed a day on the bench. Justice O'Connor has set the model. She was on the bench nine days after her surgery. She said, now, Ruth, have your chemotherapy on a Friday. That way you have the weekend to get over it. And get this, Ginsburg does 20 push-ups a day. You do? marine push-ups. There's something that's harder for me than push-up, and my trainer calls it the plank. You're on your stomach. I do it for 30 seconds, and then breathe, and then another 30 seconds. She might enjoy wine with dinner, which she says is why she was caught dozing during last year's State of the Union address. How much sleep do you get? That depends. Uh, the season. I get very little sleep when the court is sitting. I stay up as long as is necessary for me to feel comfortable that I have a solid grasp on the case. So I can get by in two, not more than four hours. She's famously oh, a workaholic and says she court loves the court. Today. Most collegial place I've ever worked. I think we understand that for the court to work well, we have to not only respect, but genuinely like each other. But this summer, she overstepped her own sense of judicial propriety when she called Donald Trump, among other things, a faker. When asked about a Trump presidency, she said, for the court, it could be, I don't even want to contemplate that. Trump tweeted a response. Justice Ginsburg of the U.S. Supreme Court has embarrassed all by making very dumb political statements about me. Her mind is shot resign. Ginsburg subsequently issued a statement regretting her ill-advised remarks, and that's where she'd like to leave I it. Said judges should, should not talk about political candidates, and the press has blown this up out of all proportion, so I would prefer not to add anything to what I have already said. Earlier this year, the court lost one of its most conservative voices, the brilliant and bombastic Antonin Scalia, and Ginsburg lost one of her closest friends. Even when we were on opposite sides, he might call me and say, Ruth, I'm not with you, but wouldn't this be a better word than the one that I had? He would help you strengthen yeah. your own argument. And I, I did the same thing with him. The best of buddies, they traveled and celebrated New Year's Eve together. We are different. And their mutual passion for the opera inspired an opera written about them. Last Monday, the first Monday in October, court was back in session. Though many of her most ardent admirers may argue it's time to step down. I don't think that a justice should have uppermost in her mind. A Democratic president appointed me, so I must leave to be sure that another Democratic president can appoint my successor. I will do this job as long as I feel that I can do it full steam. At my age, you have to take it year by year. So this year, I know I'm fine.
what will be next year or the next year, I can't predict.